Taiwan is glad to be invited to the United States Summit for Democracy. Natalie talks to French ally Senator Elaine Richard about why he's promoting French-Taiwan ties. Stash Butler speaks with Stanford political scientist Karis Templeman and NTU professor Tao Fun about tensions in U.S.-China ties. And finally, in Hashtag Taiwan, I'm going to tell you how cross-strait tensions contributed to a high-profile divorce. This is Taiwan Insider. working more and more closely with fellow democracies these days. And it was very happy to receive an invitation from the United States to attend the Summit for Democracy. <laughs> Foreign Minister Joseph Wu is all smiles as he arrives at Taiwan's legislature. And with good reason, Taiwan has been officially invited to U.S. President Joe Biden's Democracy Summit in December. The summit is set to take place from December the 9th to 10th in an online format, with a total of 110 countries invited, including Taiwan, Japan and the UK. Topics on the agenda include facing up to authoritarianism, fighting corruption and promoting respect for human rights. Digital Minister Audrey Tang and Taiwan's US representative Xiaobi Kim will represent Taiwan at the summit. Foreign Minister Joseph Wu says that the summit invitation is a testament to Taiwan's achievements as a democracy. He says Tang and Xiao will tell the United States and the world how Taiwan is defending its democracy from external threats. President Tsai won't be attending the summit. U.S.-China expert Bonnie Glazer says that's probably because Washington wants to avoid crossing Beijing's red lines on Taiwan. Opposition lawmaker Johnny Jiang says that there are a lot of political factors at play. He says authorities are struggling to manage cross-strait tensions while developing closer ties with the United States. The U.S. summit invitation comes as Taiwan plans an international event of its own. Ten lawmakers from Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia are set to visit Taiwan next month for the 2021 Open Parliament Forum. With both events taking place in early December, it's set to be a busy month for Taiwan government representatives. Now, I recently had the pleasure of speaking with one of our most important friends in France who recently led a French Senate delegation to Taiwan despite Chinese opposition, French Senator Alain Richard. Mr. Alain Richard is the chairman of the French Senate's Taiwan Friendship Group. He led a Senate delegation to Taiwan in October despite opposition from China. And President Tsai Ing-wen awarded him with a national medal for his promotion of French-Taiwan ties. He shares why it was important for him to come to Taiwan. Well, uh, there are several reasons, but we, uh, and we are, num- we are quite a number in, in French, French politics, considered Taiwan as having vast achievements in terms of success in the economy. And, uh, of course, it's a representation of democracy. And we wanted to when we're back, uh, to explain to our colleagues and to the French public how important it is to uh, support Taiwan and to keep it uh, in peace. Well, we appreciate that. There has been talk of, you know, Taiwan changing the names of its representative offices since uh, Lithuania is welcoming a Taiwanese representative office. Do you think that Taiwan should change its name in in France? It currently is called the Taipei Representative Office. Should we change it to Taiwan Representative Office? You know, this situation has lasted for 50 years. If Taiwan wants to uh, use the term Taiwan, I I said that personally I I can only approve of that because when a group of persons, when a collectivity, a community, has chosen its own name, it's always something, you know, negative, uh, or, or threatening to impose on it another name. Mm. We have this situation, for instance, uh, with the, the Kurds in Turkey, mm-hmm. uh, who are you know, uh, <laughs> deprived of their own of their their own name. So that was my comment. Now, if Taiwanese authorities want to make this move, this will be an issue with our diplomacies in, in Germany, in, uh, in UK, uh, in Italy, and the rest. 
uh, and we will certainly have a, a discussion and a tentative agreement between ourselves to say when we when do we accept this change, and it will be first with with China, but everyone is seeing the real situation. Taiwan is not a state, but in actual fact, has all the capacities and all the instruments of a complete state. And of course, uh, the uh, PRC uh, knows that better than even us. So do you think Taiwan should try to change its name or do you think we should just well, keep it as Taipei? Not, it's, it's not of my authority to give them an advice <laughs> or a suggestion. <laughs> I'm simply give, explaining you, the frame to you. Mm. So you, do you think it would be acceptable but to change the I, name? I would, like, I would like to make a, a wider comment. Most of our countries in Europe, I'm speaking about Europe, are already uh, seeing the change of the Chinese international reality. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was perfectly coherent and logical for our countries to uh, try to be cooperative with China as long as this country was opening its relationships uh, on many fields with democratic countries and was not trying to impose pressure on so many issues. The change has been slow and, and gradual. But now on many, many issues and many, many, many aspects of international life, whether it be economic, scientific, and academic, and of course, political and, and security issues, they are wanting and they are showing their decision to appear as, well, the common, uh, common term in, in, in English is assertive, but on many issues, it's threatening. Mm-hmm. What I see from many reports or many contacts, doing business long-term with serious commitments with China is becoming more perilous. As you know, the chairman of the Taiwan Friendship Group, where do you think Taiwan and France ties should be going? Should, Taiwan, should France be showing more support for Taiwan as it faces such a big threat from China? What do you want to see in French-Taiwan ties? What is more important from our point of view is first practical cooperation with many links, many concrete and human relations between Taiwanese people and French people, accomplishing in common some progress either in industry or in health. Our preference is to make more familiar, more frequent the discussions, the visits between uh, Taiwanese and French authorities, and to have a wide consultation about the security issues in the whole area of what we call Indo-Pacific, because mm-hmm. this implies many other powers between which we have an interest to be transparent. The US-China relationship right now is very tense. So Stash Butler spoke with Stanford scholar Karis Templeman and NTU professor Tao Yifen to find out if the two countries right now are waging a cold war. It's unlike the cold war between the two superpowers uh, in last century because China is much stronger than the former Soviet Union and the economic interdependence is much deeper in this globalization era. So I think it's impossible to have a cold war between two close blocks as we had last century. I am hesitant to use that term uh, because I think it obscures as much as it clarifies. Um, There's a big difference between the cold war that the U.S. and the rest of the Western world had with the Soviet Union uh, and our confrontation with China today, and that is trade. China is still the U.S.'s largest trading partner. That was never the case in our relationship with the Soviet Union. China is also the largest trading partner of all the major economies in the Asia-Pacific region. Uh, And so uh, by calling it Cold War 2.0, that kind of 
focuses on the military balance and the kind of military issues at the expense of this whole other arena of competition where, frankly, the U.S. is not doing very well relative to our position in the past. And China's advantage has been growing. And so I don't like that term simply because it, it, it obscures what will be an important part of the competition going forward. Now, the CCP recently passed a resolution cementing Xi Jinping's place in the party's history. What does that mean for Taiwan and, and, and for the rest of the Asia-Pacific region going forward? Yeah, uh, well, it means unless Xi Jinping drops dead tomorrow, I, we're going to have to deal with him for a while. And so it's helpful to uh, develop as good an understanding of uh, who he is, what he values, and especially who advises him and how he makes decisions. Um, I've been struck by how little we know relative to previous leaders about Xi Jinping uh, and how little we know, especially about the policy making process within Zhongnanhai. So I hope there's a lot of focus over the next few years on getting better intelligence, uh, either open source or classified, about what Xi Jinping wants, what he worries about, how he goes about his day, what are the sources of information he's getting. Um, to give you a, just a concrete example of how important this is, we don't know whether his what I would call his failing Taiwan policy is a result of uh, him simply not knowing <laughs> that it's failing or simply not caring that it's failing. And we don't really know whether he himself is making all the decisions on Taiwan or whether it hasn't risen to his level. Uh, and so the, the uncertainty there means that uh, people who have all of their kind of preconceived notions about what the CCP is and what Xi Jinping is kind of fill in all the, the, the vacuum, fill in the blank space with their own notions. And so we get very, very divergent predictions about what Xi Jinping will do over the next five years uh, from people looking at exactly the same data points. We need a better understanding of Xi Jinping. As history shows, this kind of totalitarian regimes are quite irrational. They will become a big threat to neighboring countries before they destroyed themselves. So I think this resolution is really bad for Asia, and uh, we all are quite worried. Taiwan is a nation of pet lovers. President Tsai Ing-wen herself has three dogs and two cats. But Taiwanese landlords aren't always so accepting of tenants' furry friends, leaving pet owners in a tight spot. Pets have become more and more popular in Taiwan. They're a lovable member of many families. But some of Taiwan's laws still don't take this into account. Miss Lee moved into her apartment this year, and her landlord agreed to let her dog live with her. But after signing the lease, the apartment complex's management proposed a no-pet policy. Miss Lee is worried that if they pass the policy, she won't be able to keep her dog. Animal protection groups and lawmakers say there are too many pet owners with the same dilemma. They say the no-pets policy is unconstitutional, as it restricts people's freedom and rights. They said rules for managing pets should be put forward instead of banning pets in the complex. Several lawmakers promised to support animal protection groups and to vie for a quick amendment to the law so that pets will be welcome in their homes. Next up, Leslie Liao brings you a story straight from the tabloid headlines in Hashtag Taiwan. Taiwan, China, China, Taiwan. Now, I'm sure you've heard a lot about these two places recently in the news, and I'm sure you've heard a lot about them from us as well. Right now, the two have a very, very tense relationship because of political differences. But they also share a lot culturally, so beneath the rough, borderline hostile exterior, there's potential for deep and meaningful relationships. But what happens when political tensions grow so immense they destroy that potential? Politics is a powerful thing, man. It can drive wedges between family and friends, and it's literally what keeps countries apart. You might think that there are bonds that can withstand political differences, like marriage, but this week, I'm going to share a story that's been circulating on the internet that runs counter to that thinking. This is Taiwanese celebrity Barbie Su, also known as Da S. You might know her as the older sister of Di Xu, another Taiwanese celebrity who was attacked by Chinese internet users 
for calling Taiwan's Olympians national athletes. This week, Barbie Su filed for divorce from her Chinese husband, Wang Xiaofei. If this sounds familiar to you, then that's because this isn't the first time Su said she was divorcing Wang. Reports of their divorce prior to this one came in June, but ultimately nothing came of those. Su's marital problems pop up so often in the media that a lot of online users, in response to this story, said things like, here we go again, and isn't that old news? But this time, the divorce is a sure thing. It's done. Su and Wong met in 2011, and according to them, they got married 49 days after meeting each other. They were only 20 days into their relationship and had only gone on four dates with each other. Back then, Taiwan and China shared much warmer relations under Taiwanese President Ma Ying-jeou. However, fast forward to today and we can see many media outlets reporting that Wang had a habit of saying things about Taiwan on Chinese social media that rubbed Su the wrong way, and that's one of the main reasons why they split up. And after they got divorced, many Chinese internet users commended Wang for choosing country over wife, which... That's a lot of patriotism, man. Wang is an entrepreneur, and he was based in Beijing. Su, on the other hand, stayed mostly in Taiwan. Given Taiwan's strict quarantine measures, it was difficult for Wang and Su to be with each other, so I'm guessing that the physical distance maybe had something to do with the divorce. But either way, it's gotta be difficult hearing the person you're married to trash talk your home country. Like, doesn't that betray, if anything, a subconscious disdain for who you are in your partner? It can't be easy living with that. However, with something as complex as a marriage, I highly doubt that there was one end-all be-all reason for ending it. Maybe if we removed politics from the equation, Wang and Su could avoid divorce, but I personally believe that's pretty naive. Su and Wang were married for a decade. They have two kids together and they have to figure out how to split their assets, which are worth 34 million US dollars. More than anything though, I feel bad for the kids and I wish that family the best. I really do. And I kind of wish I never said these words. So far, China and Taiwan have managed to politicize fruits, celebrities, and now shopping. What's next? Up next, let's take a look at the other stories that were on our radar this week. Chinese authorities have slapped two subsidiaries of the Taiwan-based Far Eastern Group with 14 million US dollars worth of fines. Beijing says the fines are for violations at the Far Eastern New Century and Asia Cements factories in China. However, Beijing also suggested that the fine could have a political motive, as the company has donated funds to politicians and political parties on both sides of Taiwan's political divide. Taiwan has opened a de facto embassy in the Lithuanian capital Vilnius called the Taiwanese Representative Office in Lithuania. The foreign ministry says that the opening of this representative office will, quote, charter a new and promising course for bilateral relations between Taiwan and Lithuania. China has responded by downgrading its diplomatic ties with the Baltic country. Premier Su Deng Chang has praised the new Taipei police force for a record-breaking drug bust it made last month. Officers seized almost half a ton of high-purity heroin smuggled inside a shipment of lumber from Thailand. But the job isn't completely done. While seven members of the drug ring involved are behind bars, the ring leader escaped to China, and Chinese cooperation in the case is far from certain given the icy state of cross-strait relations. Well, you guys, it is Thanksgiving today. It and is. so our topic for the day is what are you thankful for? Um, Leslie. Uh, yeah, so I thought about it. There's a lot to be thankful for, and I just, you know what? I'm just thankful for being here, man. <laughs> you know, here, uh, here. Well, right. like Taiwan here. Just in an Everyone. existential sense, <laughs> right. in a physical sense, wow. in a figurative, literal sense. That's like deep. I'm just that's very deep. Happy to be here. I wake up and I'm thinking, you know what, life's pretty good. So I'm like thankful for everything. Oh, that's that's nice. I'll have to keep that in mind, yeah. huh? Uh, well, I'm, I'm, yeah, I've got a kind of fundamental as well. I'm happy for, I'm thankful for my friends and my family. Oh, that's uh, nice. I You're welcome, Stash. <laughs> I think yeah. we're included in that, right? I believe so. <laughs> that's why I said you're welcome. Yeah, I think they're there for me, and that's important. That's wonderful. And I am thankful for Stash and Leslie. Hey, oh, all right. You guys oh. are great co-hosts. You guys are so much fun to work with. <laughs> And you guys produce a lot of great content too. Oh, I think yeah. it, now, now it's really good. I'm a selfish one. <laughs> 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 I'm just like, I'm glad for this. And it's all about me. It's all about me. We have uh, a little surprise actually, Vicky. Oh. So this is just to celebrate for Thanksgiving. Oh. 
We are going to have oh some oh. pie. Hey. Actually, there's more than this, that but um, pumpkin. look at oh, that. Thanksgiving that pie. We have another one, too. Uh, Did you make that, Natalie? No. I, I wish I could. Man. So I just love pumpkin pie. What about you guys? I actually don't know if I've ever had pumpkin. Are you serious? What? It's an yeah. American thing, I huh? Just, oh, yeah. it's your first time today, it's then. It's going to be my first time. It's really delicious. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I want to thank you as well for tuning in to Taiwan Insider. We hope that you'll support us. Um, you know, on social media. So um, for Taiwan Insider, I am Natalie So. I'm Leslie Leo. I'm Stash Butler. You can follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Yes, also subscribe and leave a comment below. Let us know what you think of our shows. Don't, We'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to tweet at us. Our handle is Taiwan Insider. Um, we're about to enjoy this pumpkin pie. <laughs> I'm going to go for that apple pie. Happy Thanksgiving, you guys, uh, and see you next week. Bye.